Hi. Now in this tutorial what I want to do is show you how we can do a typical question using Newton's law of motion that is force equals mass times acceleration. And what we've got here is a particle a mass 4 kilograms is at rest on a horizontal plane and a horizontal force of 5 newtons is applied to the particle and we've got a resistance of 3 newtons due to the surface being rough. Find the acceleration of the particle and the speed of the particle after 2 seconds. Now when you're doing a problem like this I would always suggest you draw a diagram. And If I was drawing a diagram for this I would want to draw the horizontal ground. Okay, So we've got something like that. Okay, Let's just make it a little bit longer. And we've got our particle of 4 kilograms. And for particles, you could draw a circle or you could draw a rectangular block. I'm just going to do a rectangular block. And this has a mass of 4 kilograms, so just put that to the side. Now we need to mark on the forces that are acting on this particle. Well, you're always going to have the weight, and the weight acts downwards, so I'd mark that in. And you could either mark this, this in as W, W for weight, okay, or you should know that weight is the same as the mass times the acceleration due to gravity, mg. And we've got the mass, m, so that's 4 times g, and don't forget those units, newtons, on the end. Now because this particle is in contact with the surface, there's got to be a reaction from the surface, a normal reaction. Normal reaction means that there's a force upwards at right angles to the surface. So we'll call that R for reaction, and again, don't forget the units, newtons. Now we've got a force, a horizontal force of 5 newtons, that's applied to the particle, so let's say that we have that going that way, 5 newtons. And you'll notice I've got these all coming from a point here because we've got to consider this as a particle. That's a very small mass where all the forces come from one particular point. We've also got this resistive force of 3 newtons due to the surface being rough. So if you're pushing now with 5 newtons to the right, the particle will want to move to the right and resistance always opposes motion. So that's going to act in the opposite direction to motion and that is going to be 3 newtons. Now we mustn't forget that this is going to accelerate. So we need to put an acceleration arrow in and if something's going to accelerate do put your arrow in double arrow like that and we'll put that as A. A meters per second per second. A for acceleration. So that would be my typical diagram that I would draw for a problem like this. Now we need to find out the acceleration first of all. So what we're going to do is apply Newton's law of motion that's force equals mass times acceleration. I'm basically thinking of applying F equals MA to this system. Okay, So I wouldn't write this in normally, but that's what I'm thinking. And what we want to do is resolve. Resolve to the right. That means I'm taking forces to the right as positive. And when I resolve to the right, I'm looking at what are the forces that act towards the right. Well, I've got clearly this 5 newtons there, so we'll just put 5 in. I don't have to write the units, newtons. Then I've got this force that opposes the 5. That's in the negative sense, so that's going to be minus 3. Remember, to the right is positive. And what about the reaction here? Does that contribute to any force in this direction? 
Well, the answer is no, because it's at right angles to the direction we're resolving in, so it has no effect. Nor does the 4G newtons, the weight of the particle, that acts at right angles to the direction that we're resolving in. So the only forward force that we've got, the resultant forward force, is 5 minus 3. Now this is the resultant forward force, that's the F part in here, and it equals the mass times the acceleration. The mass is 4 kilograms, so we can put that in, and we've got the acceleration A, which we're trying to work out. So, this is a simple equation. 5 take 3 gives us 2, and 2 equals 4a. So that's going to mean that if we divide both sides by 4, we get a equals 2 over 4, 2 quarters, or a half a metre per second per second. Alright? So, we've got that. If we wanted to, not that we're being asked, okay, but if we wanted to find that normal reaction R, what I'd want to do is resolve upwards. And if I resolved upwards, I'm looking at all the forces acting in the vertical direction. Upwards being positive. And R, for starters, is a positive force. It's in the upward direction. Looking at the force coming down, the weight, we've got minus 4g because it's in acting in the opposite direction to this, so that's minus 4g. We wouldn't have the 5 or the 3 in this equation because they act at right angles to the vertical direction. So I can ignore the 5 and the 3. So this is my resultant force, my F if you like. And there's two ways of looking at what this equals now. We can say that, well, OK, it's mass times acceleration. And we could write 4 times the acceleration in the vertical sense. And that acceleration is 0 because it doesn't move off the plane or it doesn't go into the plane. So you could say it was 4 times 0, which comes to 0. Or you could just simply put zero in there and look at it as, well, this is my resultant force in an upward direction. And because it doesn't move in an upward direction, that resultant force must equal zero. So whatever way you look at this, that reaction is going to be 4G Newtons. But we weren't asked in this question to find that, but if we were, that's what you would do. But what we are asked now is, after finding the acceleration of the particle, we've got to find the speed of the particle after two seconds. Now I'd want to add to this diagram. I would want to add the fact that this particle was originally over here, say. And I'll just do a dotted diagram of that particle. We'll extend the surface. There you go. When it was over here, it was at rest. It had no speed. So I'll put a little arrow there with a zero, zero meters per second. But then two seconds later we find that it's moved across here due to this forward force of five newtons there. It ends up here say. Two seconds later t equals two. It is actually moving with some speed. We've got to find out what that speed is, and I'm going to call it V. V meters per second. So how do I find out what V is? Well, this is a typical case for using the SUVAT equations. SUVAT, I hope you're familiar with that. S-U-V-A-T. SUVAT. S, remember, is displacement, not distance, but displacement. Do we know the displacement? Do we know what the displacement has been from moving from here to here? No. So we don't know that. Let's just put a cross. We don't know what that is. Okay. U. Do we know what the initial velocity was? Yes, we do. It was zero. So we can put that in as zero. Zero meters per second, if you like, to put the units in. V. Do we know what that is? Well, of course not, because that's what we're trying to find. So there's our query there. 
A, the acceleration. What's that? Here it is, half a meter per second per second. So ms to the minus 2 there. And the time, we know what that is. It was 2 seconds, so t is 2. So how are we going to find out v when we know u, a and t? We've got to use one of the SUVAT equations and that one is v equals u plus a t. Hopefully you're familiar with that. So using this, okay, we can see that v equals u, u was 0, let's just pop that in there, plus a t. a was a half and t was 2, so we've got a half times 2. So what's v going to be? Well, half of 2 is 1, so therefore v equals 1 meter per second. Okay? So we have our acceleration and through finding our acceleration we could find a, our final velocity which is 1 meter per second to the right. The speed is the magnitude and that would be 1 meter per second. Okay well I hope that gives you an idea and the type of diagrams that I would kind of encourage you to use, okay?